Okay, hey, welcome back everybody and thanks for tuning into our YouTube channel. On this video what you're going to see is you're going to see something a little bit different than normal. We're not going to really highlight all four of our cars. We're going to mainly concentrate on Kalen's car. This is Sunday day two of the $10,000 to win doubleheader race at Rock Falls Raceway. We ran yesterday, Saturday of course. Everybody went two or three rounds. That was about as far as any of our cars made it in yesterday's program. Chris can shear. Chris and Bud and Tim can shear from Eau Claire here. They cleaned house yesterday, Saturday, and uh, had just a great day. So they were the big winners of the $10,000 on Saturday's program. Today, of course, is a new day. Everybody goes to bed Saturday night, looks at why they lost, how they lost, what mistakes they made. We wake up today. Sun shining, beautiful day, get a little breakfast in our tummy, and all of us racers are ready to try it again. That's the beauty of this sport. No matter how bad you do the day before, you wake up positive and you're ready to try it again because truthfully, this is just a game of mistakes. He who makes the most mistakes loses. You don't need to be dead on and perfect on your dial every pass. You just need to be better than the guy in the other lane. A lot of times that can be pretty sloppy and you still get the win. A lot of times you got to be dead on to get the win. That's kind of how this sport goes. You know, a lot of times it's uh, you can win with a 40 light just as easily as you can win with a 004 light. Just kind of depends on who you line up against and how their day is going too. But like I said in this video, you're going to mainly see us concentrate on Kalen. Today was Kaylin's day. Of course, she's had a great year. She's won a big race every holiday weekend. And here we are, Labor Day weekend, Rock Falls Raceway, second day on Sunday, and Kaylin starts to find her groove. So we're going to go round by round on this video. We're going to show you what it took for her to go, I believe, nine rounds by the time the runoff was done and get you to the final round in her car with her. We don't have the second round. We forgot to turn the GoPros on for the second round, but we have every other round, and we also have some in-car footage that will show after the pass. You'll see the in-car view from Kalen's Point, and you'll get a chance to see just what it took. It was a great day. A lot of great racers, great atmosphere, and 10,000 bucks on the line. So enjoy the video. Thanks for tuning in.
So I just want to jump in here and give props to Chris and Bud and Tim Kinshear for what they did and the sportsmanship they showed Kalen. Now here we got Chris in the eighth round. This is a Super Pro Final for Sunday. Keep in mind, like I said earlier, Chris won the program on Saturday. He had already won the whole $10,000 show on Saturday, and here he finds himself in the final again, the Super Pro Final, on Sunday. And he's against us and Kalen. Now keep in mind that Chris has been running in the same lane that we have been. He's been favoring the left lane, just like we do today. So we know that there's going to be something that's going to have to happen. We're going to have to flip a coin. We're going to have to do something to see who gets lane choice. Because we both want this left lane. But out at Rock Falls, how they do it out here, and it's something that they should seriously look into fixing, is they do it with whoever gets to the staging lanes first, whoever the first car is in the pairings, that guy gets lane choice. Well, that's, you know, maybe that's okay for the first, second, third, fourth round, whatever. But when you get to the finals or the semis, you know, it should really be decided on a coin flip or draw cards or just a gentleman's agreement between the two drivers for who gets what lane. Now, Chris, he pits a lot closer to the staging lanes than we do. So when you get the call... And when they call him up there for the final round, Chris would have beat us to the staging lanes, no doubt. But what did Chris do? When we were in the seventh round, the round previous, and Kalen won that round, the semifinal round, I'm walking back. Chris is pulling into the water box in his dragster. And Chris motions me over to him while he's sitting in the water box. His car is running. I bend down by Chris. Now Chris is in the right lane for his buy run. I bend down by Chris and Chris says, Kaylin can have the left lane if she wants for the final when I run her. Now ain't that something? That is really a sportsmanship move. That's really something that what Chris did for Kaylin and for us. He was gonna make a hit in the right lane because he knew that we were in the left lane all day and Chris wasn't going to be that guy that stood there and wanted to make an issue out of the left lane right lane controversy so Chris took his buy run in the right lane got himself a little bit of a delay box setting came up then and met us in the final we got the left lane Chris got the right lane just luckily Chris went 002 or 003 red something like that because Kalen missed the tree like I said earlier hey it's a game of mistakes you're gonna miss it once in a while that happens but in the final round against Chris Kalen missed the tree big as hell if you see the in-car camera you'll see her reach up and hit the bump down as she dropped the trans brake button you'll see her left hand come up and hit the bump down because she knew she was late on the drop but just luckily, Chris had went 3 thou red or 2 thou red. Talk about it being our day. But I wanted to make mention of the nice move that Bud and Chris and Tim did there to give Kale in the left lane. That's what you call sportsmanship.
Good try, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little in there, so we'll do it. Final round, ten thousand dollars on the line. Final round, Steve Wars for Minnesota, Salem Signal for Beauclair. Sunday afternoon, final round, the Rumble at the Rock. Gonna jump in here one last time and talk about our final run against Steve Roars. Steve is a no box car. Now we're in the runoff for the ten thousand dollars. There's no doubt Steve, tough competitor. There ain't nobody tougher than Steve Roars. He's been doing it a lifetime. We made a big mistake in that final round. We had just went 489-9 against Chris Kinshear. And of course that was flat out because Chris went red. We ran it flat out. We went 489-9 on our 489 dial. Track was going away. It was later in the day. No prep was being done. The car was slowing down, no getting around it. So we went 489.9. So we put our dial in on a 490. Okay, that's one thousandths up. We should have put it in on a 91, knowing that it's gonna just continually get slower. And if we have to drive it down there, we will. But we should always remember to go up. But we carried a 90 in. Steve left with a 008 light to Kalen's 12. That's almost a wash. Definitely Steve's got us by 4th hour, but that ain't much. We get down there, our car goes at 91.9 flat out. Actually, Kalen did burp at 1 going by him, so it's probably going to be a 91.5, 91.4. But we were on the 90 dial. If we would have just went up to a 91, we'd have ran right on. Things would have looked a lot different down there. Now granted, Steve was dead three with a 008 light, so he's got an 11 thousandths package. Some people like to say, well, his total is 11 and your light was 12, you're mathematically eliminated. Not the case. It don't always work like that. If we would have got down there a hundredth of a second sooner, Steve might not have made the action that he made down there. Things can change. So live and learn, we should have went up on a 91, might have been just what we needed to get by the round. But congratulations anyway to Mr. Steve Roars. Hell of a job. We're happy. We made it to the split. It's all that matters. It was a great day. Still did a great job. Excellent job today. Sunday Rumble at the Rock, Kalen Hignac. Now, I watched a lot of this weekend. Car was on kill all weekend, and the Super Pro final that you had against yesterday's winner, I mean, to get here, you had to go through Chris Couchier. You did that. You make it to the final, set on kill against Steve Roars. What happened in the final? Uh, I, I, we always say we get one lucky pass, and I think that was my lucky pass. I didn't see the tree coming down, and by the second yellow, I was off the button, and I was slapping my buttons. It was basically a heads-up race, and um, my lucky pass. 
Well, I'd rather be lucky than good sometimes, right? Exactly. <laughs> now, tell me a little bit about this car and how long have you been racing? Uh, I can't tell you much about the car. I'm just the driver. <laughs> I got a whole big family crew that takes care of that, but I've been driving this car for about six years now. Wow, six years. Now, did you perhaps come out of the junior dragster ranks? I did. My entire family uh, junior drag race. So, yeah, I came up doing junior since I was eight years old, and they said, okay, it's time to save up for a big car. So AJ and I took a couple years off and saved up for a big car, and here we are. Well, again, I'm going to let the family take over. The runner-up today in the $10,000 race here at Rock Falls, the Rumble at the Rock, is Taylor Bittner.